On a whim, I decided to play fast and loose with fate and buy the first graphics card that shows up in my local Craigslist used section. And it seemed like fate was on my side for this video because I very nearly bankrupted myself. Uh, but before we look at the graphics card that I did end up getting, if you like my t-shirt and you also want to be transparent about the loser that you are, go check out the merch store with the link in the description below. Okay, so this is gonna be pretty straightforward. We just go to computer parts. Oh, that is a dodgy listing of a very old Quadro. I love how they just used stock tech power-up photos on it. That's always very promising, but at least it wasn't an RTX 4090, so I don't have to like mortgage my cat or whatever. Funnily enough, I did actually scroll further down the listings and there was an RTX 4090 just a couple graphics cards lower. Although in hindsight, considering how the last couple of days have gone, I would have happily bought the RTX 4090 instead. Okay, the graphics card is in that package, which according to Anna, who actually did the Craigslist alleyway knife battling for the graphics card, she bought it from a man wearing silk pajamas at like three on a Tuesday afternoon. So he is clearly living the life. Okay, so apparently we're starting off with the back where we've got some, some heat sink for the back of the VRM. It does also have an SLI finger, so if Pajama Man happens to find another one of these to sell, we could run them in SLI. Wow, this old NVIDIA Quadro FX4400 is in pretty good condition considering that it was launched back in 2005 for 2,400 US dollars. So the 35 Canadian dollars we paid for it was clearly a bog. Ooh, wow, okay. There's actual copper heatsink under there. That's very nice. So once I'm done with this graphics card, I can melt the heatsink down and sell it for like three pennies. Ooh, on the fan, we've got an NVIDIA logo that harkens back to my youth as a foul-mouthed drifter. That is an old NVIDIA logo. Ooh, there's this weird connector on the board that I don't recognize. It looks a little bit like an internal audio header, but I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section down below if you recognize that. And then finally at this end, we get a single six pin supplemental power connector. So yeah, it shouldn't draw too much juice. And then on the back, we've got rear IO that's nice and period correct. We've just got two DVI ports and I think that's an S video port. So considering the advanced age of this random Craigslist pickup, we're not gonna be able to play any remotely modern games on it. I think it only supports DirectX 9 and I don't even think that's gonna be the limiting factor for stuff we can play on this geriatric card. But before we worry about that, let me quickly tear it down. It is now the future and I officially hate this octogenarian graphics card. But anyway, uh, let's tear it down and have a closer look at its insides. Oh, that comes off first. Oh, I see. And then we have the heatsink under there. That is a pretty serious bit of copper in that heatsink, which is something you don't really see in modern graphics cards. It's mostly aluminium fin arrays. So that's pretty cool. Someone broke. And then there's the heat sink. Now, first off, the thermal paste is bone dry. I actually think that is the original factory application. It's just a solid billet of copper that they milled the heat sink out. So this, this is the bit that I'm gonna melt down later. This is a whopping 512 megabytes of GDDR3. You know, you gotta get a lot of VRAM for that $2,400 asking price. Ooh, and there is our Korea GPU. Very interesting. Uh, as far as I understand, this is actually the same GPU that's in the 6800 GT. This is just like the Quadro version of that card. And the die was made using a 130 nanometer process compared to like seven nanometers today. Ooh. Now here is the back of that heatsink with thermal pads that make some real complete contact with the, the video memory under that. So these are actually the same memory modules as the ones that weren't covered by a heatsink. The only reasonable explanation is that this discrepancy exists as a metaphor for classism. It's always really cool having a look at old hardware like this, even if it is a massive pain in the ass to interact with, uh, which I think brings me to the next part of the video. 
Now, first things first, I'm curious to see how Windows 10 deals with this 18 year old graphics card. So I'm gonna drop it in this test system and just see what happens. A few moments later. It is refusing to post, so clearly gotta figure something else out. I'm gonna use this X58 based platform, which is one of the older platforms I have lying around. Uh, it's still many years the junior of that FX4400, but yeah, ho hopefully it works in here. That took weirdly long to set up, so hopefully it works. I'm gonna be pretty upset if it doesn't, let's. The next minute was tense, with posting seeming less and less likely until Oh, yes! Oh, it scared me a bit there. Now it may have posted, but Windows 10 refused to boot, which I was kind of expecting considering the age of the graphics card. So I decided to install Windows 7 to see if that worked instead. Oh yeah, this motherboard has killer ethernet in it, so it doesn't have drivers. Okay, I need to go download that on a different PC. System check, it passed that bit. Driver was not successfully installed. Uh... Now in case it wasn't already clear from my defeated demeanor, at this point I had already spent most of a day struggling with this graphics card. Why is this system behaving like it's relapsing? It's a new Windows 7 install on a beast system. What's going on? I actually just realized I plugged the SSD into a SATA 2 port, so that may be why the system has been so infuriatingly slow. So when I plugged it into the SATA 3 port, it, it wouldn't boot. And then I plugged it back into the SATA 2 port, and now the Windows install is broken. At which point, I reinstalled Windows 7, but nothing changed. Drivers still wouldn't install, and the system just generally behaved like it was recently lobotomized. I'm gonna test it with a different graphics card to see if Windows 7 is still gonna throw a tantrum with this GTX 960, just to get a better indication of where we stand with this FX4400. Quite concerningly, the moment I plugged the GTX 960 in, everything worked perfectly. I'm not surprised about that at all, but because it doesn't have Elma plugged into it, uh, the system's super happy all of a sudden. Yeah, whatever, I'm done for today. Ah, it is now the next morning, and I've recovered from the desire to blend the graphics card down and feed the GPU smoothie to Pajama Man. And I've come up with a new plan as well. Uh, I went and found an LGA775 based system. I think there's a Core 2 Duo in here, I can't quite remember, but we'll, we'll find out soon enough. And I'm gonna use this with the old FX4400. Well, this time it's the rest of the system not working, so I, I guess that's a nice change of pace. I then tested four other system configurations, none of which worked with the FX4400, which meant I had to abandon all dignity and crawl back to the X58 system. But this time, trying something different. Now getting Windows XP running on this system was a complete nightmare, which I'm not gonna walk you through because otherwise this video is gonna be two hours long. But basically, trying to find a working Windows XP ISO to download in 2022 feels like covering yourself in chum and going swimming in hearts by. And then getting the Windows Virus Edition that you just downloaded to install is even more harrowing. Here's a brief explanation of the process from Crazy David. At this point, it feels like I've been trapped in purgatory with it for the last two days. This really is my idea of hell because every single step something breaks and then the way in which it breaks requires like three steps to fix the broken thing and then at every one of those steps something breaks as well. So it's like a fractal of just crap breaking the whole time. But at the end of quite a while I managed to get Windows XP working install graphics card drivers, and get a game running. Yes! Something has launched. We even have an overlay. Okay, things are going very well now. We are, we are cooking with gas here. And we're getting over 140 frames per second at 1080p. So this Pajama Man graphics card is a complete monster. 
I want to set the graphics up a bit more. Whoa, even with cranked graphics in lock on modern air combat, we're getting about 50 frames per second. This graphics card is a monster. Apparently it's 0% utilization. Okay, it, it's definitely running on the graphics card though because we don't have an iGPU. Other than that, we're only using about 140 megs of our video memory and the temperatures are sitting at about 53 degrees Celsius. So that copper heatsink is putting in some work. Oh yeah, let's see this detail. Look at that ground. Oh yes, we've got trees, there's smoke, we've got some buildings. So with that, what did we learn in today's video? Well, if you buy a graphics card from a man wearing silk pajamas, you're likely gonna end up wrestling great whites in the dodgier corners of the internet. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.